Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe here today and I want to talk to you about my naming system for all of my cash devices, phones and computers included. So as you can see behind me, I have all my VNC windows open and I'll get into that a little bit later. For now, I want to talk about physically naming your devices and then we'll get into naming them on a software level. Both are important for different reasons. I find the physical naming system to be the most important. About a month ago, I went to this system and I don't feel like I need to go into why organization is important. It's obviously important. So here's a photo that demonstrates my physical naming system. I just took a Word document and numbered one through 30 in a table format, printed it out twice. So I had two ones, two twos and so forth. Device number one, it gets labeled slap on the back of the phone number one and then put a number one on the table slot number one contains phone number one slot number two contains phone number two i think you get the idea here so that's how my physical unique id system works you can do whatever you want you could call a phone k52j if you want or you could call it you know just darth vader it doesn't matter the point is you want a unique naming system i find just incrementing by one all the phones uh, is the simplest way to do it so from that point, I take that unique ID that's on the physical level and then I put it into a spreadsheet and I'll leave a link in the description to download a template spreadsheet. On that spreadsheet, it basically has all the devices, one through 32 currently, probably get more here pretty soon, more slots. And device number one, then it tells you all the information about it. It tells you what it is, what model it is. It tells you the email that's signed in on the mail client, whether it be Apple Mail and iOS devices or Google, Gmail on Android devices. If it's an iOS device, then there is a slot for Apple ID email in case if it's different, Apple ID password on that device. Then from that point, I got like cash information, you know, uh, what, what app it's using, what email signed in with that cash app, password. And then I also have on there a second slot because you guys will figure out my next routine video. I have devices doing different things throughout the day. So I have a second slot. If I if I ever need a third slot, I can just copy it, you know, and make a, th a third cache device slot. And then I also have additional information on the spreadsheet. So just any other miscellaneous information that needs thrown in about the device or the accounts. So that, in my opinion, is the most important aspect of my naming system. Software naming is important for further organization for the simple reason that VNC will recognize the device whenever I connect to it on remote access. Uh, via, via the same physical name that I'm using. So to do this on iOS and Android, you go about it a bit different. On iOS, you just go to general and settings into about phone, and then you put in whatever the physical ID is for that device. You can also change it up a bit, you know, maybe change it to like a shorthand name of the model, like Moto E-1, that kind of thing. Then on Android, what you got to do, sometimes you can go to settings and actually change it in the about phone section in there. But most of the time, in order to get it to be recognized on a software level by VNC to be what the physical ID you want it to be as, you'll have to change the model name. And that's a little bit complicated. I have a tutorial from earlier this month or last month, something like that, to changing the device name on your Android devices in this way. Then from there, I actually save the VNC file, it'll save the internal IP address whenever I connect to it. I'm not going into the technicalities with VNC either in this video. If you need any information on remote accessing your computers or your phones, you can go in the description to watch those videos. So I'll save anyway the internal IP address and the passwords of the devices in a file. I won't use an address book, you can do that if you want. I just prefer to save all of those VNC access files in a folder on my computer. So that way when I'm ready to connect to the device, then I can just click on the VNC file and open it up like I have here nice and quickly. That's how I did it when I was in Niagara Falls. Here's a photo of me remote accessing from Niagara Falls. How it worked, I had my MacBook Pro right here with me when I was there. I just got on, connected to my custom built Hackintosh, which is on 24 seven, which then is a gateway to my money making phones. On here, I got all of my VNC files saved with the internal IP addresses of the phones, passwords, if they're stored on there for VNC, I can just connect to it that way. Computers are basically the same way. You can install VNC server and then just save 
that access file. You can also use Team Viewer as I do for a few of my computers instead of VNC Viewer. So anyway, that's my organization system on both a physical level and a software level with all my money-making devices. I wanted to share that with you. I'll be back later this week to share more money-making videos with you guys. In the meantime, have fun making money. You sign up, you install the extension. Once you have the extension installed and you're signed in on that browser, start searching for things to buy on the web. That is what triggers the QME sidebar, then you can click those websites and earn a 